Okay, I've got the camera down there and we're looking now at putting our tractor back together. So I've brought the tractor close enough. I've done all the filming I need to. I've brought the tractor together close enough that we can start talking about what we've got to do to get it back together. Now, the first thing to touch on the tractor is this throttle rod. So as you're coming closer, try and make sure everything is lined up as good as you can by eye. And the first thing to touch is this throttle rod where it sits up into the thermostat housing there. And I have just, I'm at the stage now where I've just fed that in. And I'm probably 120 millimetres apart, 100 millimetres apart, something like that. So we've started that going together. The other thing we should talk about is, if you remember when we pulled it apart, it had a gasket between the housings to stop galvanic corrosion, um, which is a corrosion that forms between two dissimilar metals, like a, 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 an alloy, like in the gearbox bell housing and the cast iron, as in the, um, the engine block. So they had a gasket originally. The main idea of that gasket was to stop galvanic corrosion. It's not to seal the water out or anything, because if you recall, in the bottom of the bell housing, there's a little telltale hole that lets any um, oil from the clutch or anything like that come out. So it's completely irrelevant to that. It's just for galvanic corrosion. So I've chosen not to put a gasket back on, but I'm using this product here. It's a Bearco product called R51. In the rest of the world, it's Loctite 515. There is Loctite 515, but this is around half the price. And for those of you that have been in the mechanical game for a little while, you will know that when you get two bits of steel together with this Loctite 515 and you pull them apart, there is a, um, th there's a film of gasket, not a silicon-based gasket. There's a film of gasket that it's a bastard to get off. It's, um, you have to buff it off. It, and so that gives us a good, um, a, a good divider or a, or a good shield between the two metals. Now, the R51 or the Loctite 515, you can also put a little bit on the bolts and that will do the same as a Duralac and that puts a little bit of a seal on there as well. So not a lot, just enough to, um, to have that fine um, coverage. So, that's what I've chosen to do. Some of you may not like that idea. You might think, oh, you're rough bastard. That's good, you're fine. <laughs> oh, this is just how I've chosen to do it. Um, from history of buying these gaskets, um, you could buy some of these bell housing gaskets, but the ones I've had in the past, they're that thin and bloody flimsy that if you can get one on there without buggering the whole show up, you're a better man than me. They're, I don't know where they're made, but they're dry and you try and fold them out and you know where the bolt goes through and they split. So this is the way I've chosen to do it. So, so watch along. At the moment we're in neutral with the tractor. Um, we're going to, I've just started this rod here in the thermostat housing. I'll go and have a bit of a look, make sure it's still there. With all me talking, yep. Okay, I might lower the track, lower the camera a little, and try and keep you in in with what's going on. And I may also, I think it would be good to have you in line with the split there. So look, I think that's okay. I'll just work along with this. Now you can. Some people like to use guide bolts, and a guide bolt is a long bolt that goes in here, and as you're coming close together, you can actually pick up one of the threads, and some of them have, they're just a tapered bolt with no heads on, which I do sometimes. But the other one is, there's a couple of long bolts near the, near the hydraulic shaft on your lift cover. You can get them, and they'll stick out about so far, but whatever you do, do not push it together or draw it together with the bolts. So what I'm going to do from here, 
I'm going to just try and try and wheel him together if I can, if I can get everything to line up. And it may or it may not. But I think I'll put my chocks in a little bit better at the front here. And I'm, I'm just trying to see, yeah, there's nothing touching in there yet. The only thing, oh, and that's fell out, good on you, is my little throttle rod. So I'll push that in again. And I'll try and keep it all together here Lance. Now looking down here the back ends across just a little way I believe so you can either push the front across by pushing one wheel you can straighten that up a little like I've just done there so we'll push it forward a little more and this might take quite a while, we might have to speed some of this up. There we go. Okay, what went click then? We can see the throttles through over here, I'm happy with that. Our holes are pretty well lined up. That's not too bad. But you can see we're still slopping around a little bit. But I feel that we are, we're close enough now that that's about how big the spline would be. So I'll do the bolt thing, just, I just want to show you, it's a good idea and, and it is a help. So I'll just grab a couple of these bolts quickly. This one there, geez, here's a tight one. So, right, so I have, I have two bolts. These are out of the lift cover, just behind the hydraulic rock shaft. Now, what I would do with these, is you bring him in, and I can see that's over on an angle like that now. So this back wheel needs to come in a little bit, and that will straighten that up. And I'm putting one in the exact same place on the other side. So what the idea with that is, and I'll use a little can as a shock. When I push this wheel across here, this front wheel, I'm putting a little wedge behind it to try and hold it in place. And what I'm hoping for is that this bolt here will just screw in like that. So by putting this bolt in here, we're not to put any pressure on the on the whole show but we're just getting a few good threads there and that'll help us as we as the tractor comes together that'll help us now at the moment i believe i'm wider at the bottom than the top so i have to pull one or both stands up with splitting tractors it's all about keeping this gap around the middle here as even as possible. So I'm just doing the same on this other bolt round here. The 
So we know it can't go left or right now, but we can still be out up and down a little bit. And do not put any pressure on these bolts. Just don't do it. All right, I'll give that a bit of a bougie, a bit of a rattle around. The chance of the splines being lined up are very buddy slim. So I'll get my I'll get my trusty shifting spanner. This fella here, I'm going to put that on the PDO with the PDO in gear and rock that back and forth or turn it round and round. So this is on the back PDO shaft. And can you hear that? That noise is the main shaft rubbing on the clutch plate. So if we hold a little bit of pressure forward and do that, we can, if we're pretty good, if we're lucky, we'll find a place where that noise will stop and you can feel it a little bit notchy. And look, it feels pretty good about there. That's pretty good. So I'll get both hands onto these back wheels and give it a bit of a bit of a shunt just to see if it's see if we're close enough. And while doing that we'll so we're not quite lined up. We can't be. So I'll give this front a bit of a push and see. Oh, my wedges, my wedges come out there a little bit. I'll give this push my little wedge in a bit further with that. So there's a bit more pressure there. So my gearbox is still in neutral. And what do we look like here? I think the camera side is slightly wider. I'll come around and have a look. Yes, I think the camera side is slightly wider and the back could go up just a little. Sound probably disappeared then, I was rubbing the microphone. And there we go. You see that just go in? While I was pushing on the right hand rear wheel, I was turning the PDO. So now, if I put a bit of effort in, you should see that, you should see that um, flywheel turn. I'm hoping you can see that. So all we have to line up now is the spigot bearing. So we don't have any bolts that are ready to start just yet, and that's good. We don't want to pull it in yet, we're still not close enough. But we know our, um, we know our splines in. Sometimes just a bit of a big wriggle here and things will go. Just like that. So we can start these bolts by hand. And we'll start one, one in there somewhere, one down the bottom. And we're just starting them by hand so nothing can come apart once they're there. Now, if you remember the length of the pilot bearing on the end of the shaft, that was around oh, probably three quarters of an inch. So, and we're barely a quarter of an inch 
out now. We might be 10 mil out, I suppose. That'd be a reasonable assumption. So once you get to that, and you want to nip a bolt up by hand, there's no, oh, nip them up by hand, but you'll notice that you can, at that stage, I'll give this one another wriggle. And just a big rough old bloody bang around the paddock there. And this one will go in, so. so I'll just bring that in with a spanner, just bring it in. And you can see the Loctite squeezing out. I'm happy with that. Same on this other side. I'll just do one bolt on this other side up just to hold it all true. And I'll put one down the bottom on this other side. I'll explain all this just in a moment. Why I'm doing what I'm doing. So we have one bolt each side about a little over the bolt above the dowel we have a couple of bolts just nipped up. Okay. Now at this stage, you do not go ahead and assemble the tractor. I'll shut the camera down, I'll pick it up again round the other side and I'll show you the reason why. Okay, as part of splitting our tractor, you may wonder what I'm doing around this side on the bell housing here. It's not to do bolts up. What we're doing around here, because hiding those wires out of the way, we don't want to talk about them yet, is we're going to put the clutch pedal on. So, it just sits on there like that. And you may remember inside when we did the bell housing repairs inside there, we put a new throw out bearing and everything on there so that's all good so what we're doing here we're just nipping this up we're just tightening it up barely and it has to be in as far as it can go so we're still too loose okay that's just starting to push the throw out bearing so we know that when the pedal comes this way, that pushes the throw out bearing. So we have to hold the pedal this way, hold the shaft I mean, sorry, not this, we need to hold the shaft that way, and that's tight enough that that's not springing back. So we'll just nip that up just a little, then we've got no clutch free travel here, so we need to just give ourselves a fat finger. So we'll probably try and pull that down to about half an inch. So we can bring this back down there. See we have no free no free travel there at all at the moment. So we just want to move this pedal and you'll notice it slips around this here. I can't remember what the proper measurement is, it does not matter really. So that's probably three eighths of an inch under there. So we know that when we rest on a pedal there, the throw out bearings touching on the fingers, we know when it's up, it's not touching on our fingers. So what we need to do now is tighten this up. Okay, so now we can push that down, it comes right back, and we still have a little bit of free movement here. Now, what are we doing that for? 
Well, we're going to try and save you a lot of heartache. I'll shift the camera back a little. And we'll come up here. And I've got a, crow, I've got a, a lever here. So let's take the tractor, put it in fourth gear. So that's in top gear. Now, we turn the engine over a little bit. Okay. You can just hear the back end starting to move. So the tractors, if you have a look at the wheel here, you'll see it just move a little bit. So what I like to do is on this back wheel here, I like to put a chock of wood under it. I like to turn the tractor by the ring gear, by your nice shiny new ring gear, until there's a bit of a bit of movement up on the a little bit of movement up on to that block of wood. And then the idea is to press the clutch and see it roll back just that little bit. So you can wind him up again, just bring him up onto the board a little bit, press the clutch, and if it just rolls back, you know that your clutch is right. So you can go ahead now, you can fit all these parts, you can put all the whole thing back ready to run. And you don't get to the stage where um, you get the tractor all together, all your steering done, your whole lot, you start the tractor and you think, God, that bloody clutch is no good, it's not working. We've just done a quick test on that clutch in fourth gear. So you can see that back wheel coming up here. So what I'm hoping to show you here is when I press this clutch, this will want to roll back. Okay, do you see that? So we rolled back against the other chop. So that was the idea of bringing you around here and showing you that. Before you get the whole tractor back together, test that your clutch is good. Make sure then, pop him out of gear, so that when you go and start it, well on these it's not so bad, you can start it with the gear stick, you need to. So, But when you go to start it, it's not in gear. So. Now we've done all that there, we've checked that the clutch is working that we've just put in. We can just start bolting everything up. And we can go all the way now until we get to where we can start the tractor up. And then we'll put the foot on the clutch and make sure the clutch works and get it into gear. So that's all I'm going to film now. Um, the parts that you saw me unbolt, like the foot plates here and the steering rods and the you know, your little bolt here. and where this goes down onto the um, banjo bolt there. I'm not going to film, film all of that, putting it back together. I just wanted to show you what I go through to assemble the tractor to button it back up into one piece.